Hi everyone. Today we'll be looking at for loops, also known as definite repetition. Now, if we remember back to while loops, while loops would continue until some condition was met. So we were never sure how many times the loop would go, which is different than the for loops that we're about to learn. For loops or definite loops are ones where we know exactly how many times the loop will iterate. So let's say I want a circle to move 10 times, then I would declare that beforehand, where with a while loop, I would have it move until it reaches some sort of destination. So let's look at the syntax. In order to uh, write a for loop, I need three terms with my for statement. So in the front, we're going to initialize some variable. Normally, you're going to see that variable is listed as i, so uh, some integer i. Then we're going to be repeating some sort of condition. That condition could be uh, i less than 10. It could be um, something about a string's length or some sort of correct collection or array. And then lastly, it'll uh, include some sort of increment, how many we want to go up or down by um, during the loop's execution. Let's look at an example. First, we have some sort of circle object that is being created at an x position of 100, y position of 100, and radius of 5. Now, we want to move this circle repeatedly, and I want to move it 10 times. So if I know how many times I'd like to move it, that's a perfect example to use a for loop or a definite loop um, in this case. So first, I have some sort of initial, initialization. Here I have i is equal to 0. And then what this animation is showing you is that once the first initialization is completed, we will only visit the condition, the body statement, and then the increment. It will never go back to that first initialization term once the for loop is created or uh, run through. Now, at first, when i is equal to 0, i is equal to 0 is that first run through. So when i is equal to 0, we check it against the condition. Yes, 0 is less than 10. So then we would move that circle object 10 to the right and then increment the i value by 1. Remember that i++ plus plus stands for um, i being incremented by 1, which could also be i is equal to i plus 1. But it doesn't have to be just increment by 1. We can put any kind of um, increment there that we choose. We can go up by 2s. We can go up by 10s. Uh, we can also go down um, whatever the situation calls for. And notice how it does not go back to that first initialization until that condition is no longer true. So notice, as we go down the table, um, when i is equal to 9, that condition will still be true. But when i is equal to 10, we increment to 10, go back and check. 10 is not less than 10, and therefore we go out of the loop to whatever comes um, next. Now, we can look for general patterns with these for loops, which will be helpful for identifying uh, how many times you'd like the loop to execute. Now, if we know that we want to loop go 100 times, um, we normally will start at 0 and go up to that maximum value that we're looking to, to hit. So if I want to go 100 times, I would go from 0 up to but not including 100. Notice how we use the less than. If I want it to be 101, then I would say less than or equal to 100 or just less than 101. Another type of maximum which is used quite often is when we are iterating or looping through a string. Now, we don't always know how many characters the string will have. So if I know that the word is super with a uh, exclamation point on the end, I know that that's six characters. So I could obviously put six here. But let's say the word were to change or I'd want the method to work on many different types of words, that's when I want to use something more generic. When I want it to go through any kind of word or any kind of string object, 
that I pass to it. So in this case, I would always start at zero because zero is always the first index position of my first character in a string. And I'm going up to but not including the word dot length. Now remember, word dot length is how many characters there are. So in this case, there will be six characters, but my index only goes up to five. So it's already going through every character within the string just by going up to the word dot length and not including word dot length. Um, what the body does is it will take the character at that index position and it will print it out with a print line statement. So notice when x is equal to zero, we'll print out uh, the first letter, capital S, all the way up to index five, because five is less than the word's length, which is six, and will not reach the value of six, which is the word's length. This makes it so it's impossible to go out of bounds and the program to throw an error at us. The word dot length will always make sure that we don't go beyond the amount of index positions that are possible. Now, this is a very common error for looping, and especially with strings, where if I ask the program to reach a character not within that string, then an index out of bounds error will be something that is that is given to us. The next tip of for loop uh, that we are going to talk about deals with some sort of collection. Now we aren't going to get to arrays for a little bit longer, but an array is just some list or some collection of uh, integers, strings, doubles, whatever it might be. And the size of the collection is what we want to iterate through. But again, we'll talk more about that later. A useful piece of knowledge for setting up your for loop is if we know exactly where our starting position, our ending position, and how we would like to count is given to us. Like if we want to know all the numbers starting at 10 and going to 20 and counting by twos, if we want to find out all their sums, then that will be a quick starting point, ending point, and the increment that we would like to count by. Now notice how it says 20. So that means 20 is included. So that would tell us that we have a less than or equal to um, 20 conditional statement, meaning including 20. Now, whenever we have some sort of variable within our loop, we have to make sure that we declare it on the outside. And then we'll notice that as we go, <clears throat> the sum will go up by whatever the I value is. So here is it in a more general way. We have some sort of x starting position or starting value, some sort of y value that we'd like to go up to including, and then some sort of increment that we would like to go up by. Again, that doesn't have to be ones. It doesn't have to be going up. It can also be going down. Here are some examples for you to try. Just open up a new BlueJ project and try these three um, looping examples. Two of them have to do with finding the sum, and the third one has to do with um, iterating through a string. So remember, dot length will be a useful um, condition to, to hit every term within that loop. All right, I'm going to show you the answers in just a second, so pause the video if you would like a chance to try this. And here are your answers. Hopefully you did well. Good job.